Welcome back to the I'm your GM, Jason. What's happening? What's happening, everybody? How are we doing today? What's What's happening? What's happening? What is happening? Where am I? What time? What time is it? What God, year is it? <laughs> what year is it? Please let me know. I'm you lost. Ever, you, you ever you ever wake up from a really good sleep or a really good nap, and you're just like, "Holy <laughs> shit! What year is it?" Yes, yeah. it is the yeah. best yes. feeling in the world. No. <laughs> Oh. I oddly enough <laughs> did that this morning. I was up quite early, like four thirty five a m and went out for a walk and came home and watched some one piece for a bit, but noticed myself nodding off in my chair, so I went and plopped on my bed without changing or anything and woke up like two and a half hours later, um not sure what day of the week it was, genuinely concerned I was gonna have missed the the recording oh. um but uh luckily i found found a clock and yeah kind of figured things out yeah just like it's like a really good deep sleep a deep nap and oh. you're just like oh man what what year is it <laughs> full oh. fuzzy sweater blue jeans sitting in a sunray so you oh. wake up just so hot but so well rested yeah yeah rachel's like no i want that uh, yeah good sleep that's the thing i've Oh. <laughs> not since before the boys were born oh i was a horrible sleeper even before that so no excuses fair enough so my main issue is that i snore super loud oh my <laughs> so. god you do i love you so much you mean the world to me your snore could shake a fucking house <laughs> i'm sure it has <laughs> it probably has when we were uh what was it I got a real good glimpse of how bad your snoring is when we went on a vacation with some of our friends to New Mexico. We were at an Airbnb <laughs> and I was like, finally, like we get to like hang out and like be with our friends and stuff like that. This is great. Laid into bed next to Jackson. And I just hear. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. What the <laughs> fuck? What happened? Is there is there a monster? Was there a, a wild animal that attacked me in the middle of sleep? No, it was my ears being assaulted by my lover. Yeah. Well, I will say that uh, based on my father's experience, those strips that you put on your nose that opens things up do help. They help, but they don't eliminate it is the issue. They don't. Oh, no. Whenever whenever I go to a con or like whenever I know I'm going to be staying the night in a room with other people, I make sure to bring them. Yeah. Yeah, or else you're at... Uh, risk of being asphyxiated by another room guest yeah <laughs> that one being not, me. not by my own sleep apnea by a pillow being gently smothered yeah. over my face with force well, maybe gently at first <laughs> yeah see at least jackson whenever he snores though it's so loud that it covers up my sleep talking because i will sleep talk sometimes oh that's fair <laughs> It's yes. really funny too because uh, when we went to RTX in uh, in July, we had a friend with us that uh, that was in the same hotel room, and in the morning they looked at me and they're like, "Jackson, I don't mind that you snore, but you don't snore in a regular pattern, so I can't use it as white noise." <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we um. We got a sleep number bed that actually like lifts both oh. the head and the feet. Oh yeah! So when I broke those. my ankle, I was able to li lift my feet. Oh, which nice. was awesome because then I could sleep with my foot elevated. How's that doing, by the way? Um, great. I I start physical therapy next week, so awesome. Um, yeah. I don't have to wear a boot anymore. Apparently, my muscles and tendons are strong enough that I don't need to wear it anymore. But I will need physical therapy to um, basically make sure I don't continuously roll it because that happens. it feels like ever since I broke my ankle in high school, like oh. once or twice a year, I roll my ankle oh. and this last one was really bad that it refractured everything. So, um, yeah, so we're, I'm starting that, but, um, but yeah, we got a sleep number bed. So if, um. I'm snoring or my spouse is snoring. We, we we are able to pull up our phones and raise the bed. So like she'll raise mine or I'll raise hers. So it's nice. They it's just nice. smack each other in the face. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. You just smack Wittick. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, or go to my backup bed in my office. I have so. noise canceling headphones. I will put on. <laughs> yeah, I, I got earplugs. Yep. My dog's a bed hog and a sweetheart, <laughs> but the only time he ever growls at me is when I decide he's taking up too much bed late at night. <laughs> Because I'll wake up and he'll be like full extension pressing his legs into me, taking up like more than three quarters of the bed. So you like roll him over and he growls at you. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, (laughs) you never growl at anything. You would let somebody come in the house and rob us blind. But you're going to growl at me because you're taking up too much bed? (laughs) (laughs) My my dog also likes to press into me. And it's like it's like whenever she decides that she wants to stay the night in my room, it's a race because I have to be able to get onto the far side of my bed towards my wall with my blanket on me before she lays down. Otherwise, she like presses right up against me. And I am either like on the very edge of the bed if I don't get far enough or I'm pressing against the wall. And sometimes she'll just straight up claim my blanket. <laughs> I'm too much of a softy. I got I got like 10 pound cats and I'll just let them. Oh, I'll just let them roll the bed. And I'm just like, that's fair. Damn it. All right, fine. I will sleep I'm a 225 pound man and I will sleep in this tiny little sliver of bed and these four 10 pound cats can take the other 95% of my bed. Anyway, we were going to talk about miniatures. They like, (laughs) we were going to talk about miniatures, but we got to talk about sleeping. There's so many times where we come in with a plan for the pre session talk and it just immediately gets derailed. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because I'll I'll think of some stupid joke and then it'll just roll into banter. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, hey, we got cereal and we got minis. So well, uh, one, one of these days we'll talk about cereal, and one of these days we'll talk about minis. A cereal. And I have an important minis. question for the listeners, uh, just because I know people cook in there. If anybody makes cereal bars but doesn't make them so they're like crazy over sweetened with corn s- syrup or a bunch of uh, marshmallow uh, condensed milk or marshmallow. Let me know. What about honey? Honey would be all right. I'm just trying to avoid sweetening them too much. Yeah. I, speaking of honey, I actually just started two meats today, so we'll see how that comes Yay. in three months. Nice. I'm excited. All right. So, so am I, because Zaba's about to eat dog. Don't yeah. eat dog. Last you guys left, we... Y'all, y'all take took care of the Yamhibides <laughs> in the old clean line surveying, only to find out that they were actually brought here from the ethereal plane for s- somehow, mm-hmm. some way. And based off of what they were modifying to Alasha's maps, after you were able to put all the maps together and look upon those modifications... It looked like there was a giant spiral that was going through all of Seaview. Very, um, God, what's his, what's his name? Um, the, the manga auth, uh, Junji Ito? Junji Ito, yes. Very there Junji Ito with doing all the spirals and stuff. That's Uzumaki. Yeah. Um, so, but the epicenter of the spiral all seems to be wave watcher in which also was one of the hooks that one of the council members from the seaview council thought you should check out because his former lover disappeared from the wave watcher in now after resting y'all went over to a wave watcher tried to scout it out and stealth it, but uh, Vesuviac, sorry bud. Not the most stealthy of individuals. I've learned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, after, after, you know, Syl gave you the mom the mom glare. You know, a, a, a minus one to stealth is, you know, th- don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe let the rogue take care of it. I, I realized things. that it would literally have gone better had I just walked. <laughs> right? <laughs> true. 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 Um, well, Zaba, 
decides to knock on the door politely because he's a good man. He's a good he's, man. I, I'm, I'm a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a, he's a good guy. Um, also, this I almost met some good boys. The best boys. Best boys. But they, they might be still. They, they, they might be. They might be. Um, as the door opens, two um, canine-esque figures wreathed in fire kind of pad their way out from the fireplace and start growling. Um, the, the hair on their haunches all sticking up, very menacing. And that's where we pick up, folks, as these things are sure as shit are menacing. So we're going to go right into initiative. All right. So let me go ahead, grab your tokens and put you in encounter mode. There you go. And you can roll initiative. Uh, Seeing as I was ready to smash the door down, I get to roll with athletics, right? Sure. Well, no, you knocked and then you opened the door, right? I did. Yeah. So that's probably still perception. Yep. Ooh, a lot better than that. That was a that was Sil with a hot roll. Dang, Sil. Kinda sucks. We got a giant frog in front of the door. Well, he's an ally. You can walk through him. Ah, that's true. I mean I could, but I didn't use stealth, so there's no reason to go first. Well you can you still catch him flat footed if you go before them. Don't you have to have done stealth to get the sneak attack? No. Surprise. I don't believe so. I think if you, as long as you go first, right? No. I could, I could be. You have to roll stealth as your initiative. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well. Deception or stealth. My bad. Well, so it is your turn. Do you want to, do you just want to hold? Yeah, Yeah, we'll wait. Until. Served us well, not just rushing. Until after who? Are you just going to, just going to. Well, yeah, do an indefinite hold. Okay. Well. This um, this little guy, one of these little guys is gonna go first. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> and these little guys look like if somebody had drawn a really nice picture of a red lab. Yeah. Like a go literally ahead. red lab, but with fire coming off the back half. Um. So cute. <laughs> it looks friendly, but on fire. Like it would be alarming if this wasn't a world full of all sorts of crazy things. Like, if you saw this dog running around on fire, you'd be like, oh no, that dog's on fire, we need to help it. Um, oh, and pet not, fire. oh no, that's a demon dog. That's not your first first instinct with uh, the visual on it, that's for sure. I want to pet the fire puppy. I want to pet this dog! <laughs> Alright. Look at him. The first one's gonna come up and just... It is going to make its way towards uh, Zaba. And then will let out a howl for two actions. It goes bow wow. <laughs> yeah, it's going to let out this howl and I'm going to need all four of you oh. to make that well safe, please. Well. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> Well, um, that's three failures as Zaba rolls a, an 11 for a 20. Vesuviak rolls a 6 for an 18. Sil rolls a 12 for a 20. And Timothy succeeds with a 14 for a 22. So all... So, Timothy, you are the only one who succeeds as this hound type creature just lets off this really pitiful howl that just sounds so sad <laughs> so so sad it like it's like it's communicating all of its pain and loss that it's endured in this like mournful howl and you begin to sob uncontrollably with your success as you're only, but you're only slowed for one round. Oh. Now, the rest of you <laughs> are slowed one, but I am going to roll. 
or I'm going to need each of you to roll a d4, and that is how long you are going to be slow for. Oh. So, oh. We'll start with uh, Zaba. Roll your d4. Oh, Zaba. Oh, only one round. Good. There you go. It's good. I thought it was a four for sure. And then we'll go with Vesuviak. All right, here it comes. A one. There you go. The dice didn't even roll. It just got flung across the screen. All right, so. Oh. Yeah. That's a four. Slowed one for four. Okay. And that is its turn. And the second one. Well, you guys are you guys are now immune to that sorrow's howl, so oh. you don't have to worry about this, the 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 second one's howl. Well, let's see here. This one will come through, and we'll also just kind of just wait for his li- wait next to his buddy. Oh, and we go to Vesuviak. So slowed loses me in action. Your first action is lost. Okay. I'm gonna so, go ahead and take the move action just to get between. So that's your second. Yes. And you're no and longer slowed. With my final action, I think I'm just gonna safe bat raise shield. Okay. They don't seem hostile yet. Oh yeah, they're yeah. hostile. Oh okay. Well, they're growling at you, and they're and they're on. The hair on their on the back of their shoulders is all up and prickly. Oh. Well, they haven't attacked yet, so I'm true. Waiting yeah. to see who they're gonna go for to see who I need to buff. All right, Zaba, you are up. I am so sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you lose your first action. <sighs> so that's one. You stepping in for two. Second action was, to step. Yep. Uh, third action to hit the dog that made me feel sad. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will swing down with uh, I'll swing down with the uh, Zuggle Hammer for the first swing. Okay. That was 17 on the die for 27. That's a hit. Perfect. Oh, I think that actually rolled an unarmed strike on me. Let me make sure. Yeah, you actually rolled unarmed stri- uh, an unarmed attack. You need to actually roll the hammer damage. Oh, okay, I see what's happening. It's just not giving me the, the drop-down damage under the hammer. It's only giving me the, the sword itself. Did you pick up the so, hammer? Yeah, I've got them both equipped as per okay. the sheet. That's fine. Instead, I will strike with the sword, which has the same, uh, slightly better to hit. So we'll just roll that instead. Oh, and I, in fact, miss with the sword. Well, I mean, you could you can roll the damage because you hit. Oh, That's okay, fine. cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, that would nice. be 11 points of slashing. And some of that goes through as you swing your sword through this puppy and you realize, hey, this thing is incorporeal. Mm -hmm. So this thing's kind of a ghost puppy. Ghost dogs! Ghost dogs. Yeah! All right. Mr. Bono. Yeah. Or unless Cell wants to jump in. No, I'll wait till after Timothy. So it's like, no, 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 I am fucking with these dogs. No. All right. So where I'm at currently, am I actually able to see these dogs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. But like besides, uh, but, like, yeah, yeah, I should be able to see them. If you can, if your token t- can see them, you can see them. Perfect. Cool. So I want to do a thing. Oh my gosh. Everyone stand back. I'm doing a thing. Uh, I am going to exploit vulnerability to this dog right in front of me. So or right you, in front of a So you're slow. You, you lose your first action. Yes. I lost my first action. That's why I'm using exploit vulnerability. To okay. One action. There you go. Oh, no. I do also take out. I forgot. I take out my implement, and then I use exploit vulnerability. Okay. Because it requires me to take out my implement. All right. So, not, so that'll be your full turn, but... Um, this will be my first turn. But... 
you'll have exploited. So if you want to make that roll. Yes. Please. <gasps> Ooh. All I... right. That is a success. Yes. So you recall an important fact about the creature learning its highest weakness. And its highest weakness is cold. Cold five. This yeah. thing is weak to cold. Cool, 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 cool. And, um, but not its other weakness, resistances, or immunities. You can exploit either the creature's mortal weakness or your mm. personal antithesis. I, I would say cold five is better than antithesis mm. four. Yeah, honestly, it is. I just don't know who does cold. Your unarmed and weapon strikes against the creature also become magical if they weren't already. All right, then. All right. Yeah, I'll use uh, uh, how, however, mortal weakness. Don't forget, oh, yes. you have yeah. If you want to, tr- if you want to click the the weakness thing, I will. Ooh, and you got it on both because they're two of the same creatures. That's right. Now, now uh, make a re- recall knowledge check because you got yes. your diverse lore. Mm, no, you don't. Beans. Nope. Ah, uh, that's fine. Not ex- you don't get anything. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so Timothy, getting this information that these dogs don't like the cold, he, uh, kind of, like, straightens up a little bit and looks to the, the crew and says, hey, if you guys can do some sort of cold damage to this thing, go for it. All right. So, jumping in? Jumping in. Jump in the line. Uh, oh, so jump in the fire. First action right. gone. Second action to drop into a stance. And third action to move up. We'll just move up behind Saba, kind of in the doorway, since, you know, I can't swing at these things anyways. There's no reason to engage them. All right. And we go to the top of round two. As the first hound will go, and we'll spend two actions doing... A breath weapon. Whoa! Shoot. These, these dogs but, breathe weapons. But I want to check something real quick. Because <coughs> I believe. <laughs> okay. Yep. So they are going to use a breath weapon. Oh! Whoa! That's a little lot of dice. And we'll be able to hit both Sil and Zaba. So I'm going to need you to make that reflex save. It's a fail from Sil uh, and a critical shit. fail from Zaba. Uh, I'm, I'm going to re-roll using one of my two remaining hero points. All right. Hey, it's not a hey, crit failing here. You moved up from crit fail to regular fail. That is, that is true. That is better. So um, that was a four on the die from Sill for a 16, which was a regular failure. And Zaba originally rolled a two for a 10, which was a crit failure. Hero pointed to a three for an 11, which bumped it up to just a regular failure. So th- you both take full fire damage. 18. No. Hey. Not really. But. Doesn't really matter, because, but this is considered um, non-lethal fire damage. And this thing can't use its breath weapon for another two turns. Okay. As it recharges. And for its final action, mm, it will look at Zaba, target it, and attempt to strike at it, at him. 16 on the die for a normal hit. And so that will be 14 damage. Um, And this will be a combination of, yeah, of um, negative and fire damage. So, there you go. Interesting. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, dogs. <laughs> and okay, so this last d- puppy 
Well... We should have rolled better on initiative, just throwing that out there. <laughs> I did fine. Um, this last one's gonna come up here next to Zaba. And we'll, t we'll try to get some pack tactics. Oof. And we'll attempt to strike. And miss! Rolls a natural four. That's a miss. Huh. Strike again. Uh, natural three this time. That's another miss. And that's its, all. That's its turn. It moved. Struck, struck. All right, Vesuviac. All right. Uh, Vesuviac is going to move to not get directly behind Zaba, but within stepping distance just in case. Um, also being next to Syl as well in case any healing is needed. Um, and I want to attempt a recall knowledge check on these guys if I can. Okay, yeah, so make me, um... <clears throat> so what's your... Yo, you have warfare lore. That's not going to do anything. So, yeah, any... As a matter of fact, any of the four magical traditions, whatever's your highest, so arcana, nature, occultism, or religion, roll that um, and roll it secret to me. Okay, I'm going to do a nature check because it is just above my religion for some reason. <laughs> there you go. All right, yeah, you're not... You don't... Not going to get it on this one either. Sorry. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Um. Um. Yeah, I think just for my last action, I'll raise up a shield. There you go. Do it to it. And we go to Zaba. Corey, your turn. Yes, <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm gonna strike with aggression and fury as I take my first action to rage. There you go. I'm not even going to wait. I'm just going to go for it this time. Beautiful. And then I am going to attack the dog directly to the west of me, just further into the doorway. And I am going to use my double strike on this, so both attacks apply, and then reductions and everything are taken at once. Okay. First, first one's a hit. Second one's a hit. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, that was a 19 on the first one and a 17 on the second one. We're doing good. All right. And roll that damage again. All right. So a 12 and a 13. That's 25 total for... Um, and you get to... And it takes the reduction only once. So... Post it. Oh, oh, that's not the right one. There we go. Oof, this thing is. This puppy's not looking so great. And then we go to Timothy Bono. Alright. Uh, Timothy. Uh, I, I've been trying to think of what I want to do here because I think. You could attempt to recall knowledge again. Yeah, that's if you what I was wanted to. See about I was thinking about doing it, but right now... It, it'll be a little bit of a higher DC, but you could do it. I could do it. I... Th oh. I will give you this hint. Both of you rolled really low. Yeah, I had a feeling. Yeah. I think I'm going to try to do... Uh, I'm going to try to do the recall knowledge now. Mm -hmm. I have the esoteric lore thing. Would this by chance? Yeah, I would, give, I would give you esoteric lore on, the, on these things. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so then I guess I will roll Esoteric Lore on Recall Now. That's so right? secret. Yeah, secret. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 I will. Give me a second. Uh, bop. Bop. That's my first section. Oh, See? my God. Okay, yep. Yeah, that's a crit success. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Yeah, that was a 19 on the die. Woo! Oh, yeah. So even if I, I... I even boosted the DC and you still crit it, so... Um, wow. So, yeah, you know, these things are called hearth hounds. And they are benevolent creatures. So whatever, whatever's causing the whole to-do in this town with the spirits, 
has turned these creatures, which are usually kind and benevolent, into something that they are not. Like, they are being manipulated or um, changed in some way or shape or form. Oh. So they're, they're neutral, incorporeal spirits, undead beasts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their tags. Um, and beyond that, what three things do you want to know about it? You already know its biggest weakness, so uh, but you, so that you can ask three other things beyond its weakness because you already know that. Yeah. Uh, what's it immune to? So it has your standard undead immunities, which are mm -hmm. it's immune to death, meaning <laughs> that there's there's um there's cer certain spells that have the death trait. Yeah. Um, which means that it just doesn't affect it. So okay. like um. Disintegration, like ray of descent or disintegration ray or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. that like that just won't affect this thing because that has the death effect on that spell. Um, it's immune to disease because you can't really disease a ghost. Yeah, that's but, fair. Um, it's immune to fire. No fire. Got Obviously, it. I mean yeah. it's a fire spirit. Yeah. It's immune to mental par paralysis, poison. Precision damage and unconscious. Okay. So Timothy relays this to at mm -hmm. least the party, at least that, uh, being like, "Hey, maybe don't do anything like precision damage to this thing. Uh, don't poison it. Definitely no fire. This thing's not gonna take it, or it, it won't take any damage." Uh, I have two more questions I can ask. I'm trying to think of the other ones I want to ask. So there's resistances, there's special abilities, there's... Yeah, special ability. I'm curious about it. All right, so you already know the howl, and you already saw the breath weapon. Yes. Um, so so give me with. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So roll me a d6. Roll a d6. Uh, d6. Yeah. Uh, just free yeah, roll or? Just free roll. Just so I, I, I'm just going to pick one at random. Four. Okay. So this thing is hearth bound, meaning that it is bound to a certain hearth. And it cannot leave the premises to which it's bound. So both of these things are bound to this particular fireplace and they cannot leave this particular this particular uh, fireplace. Okay. So you know that they're just bound here. Got it. So those those two things. Mm-hmm. Mm, I'm trying to think of what last question I want to ask because I've got uh, resistances. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that that'd be a good idea to have. So it's resistant to all damage, five. And the <laughs> only thing that can overcome it is force, ghost touch, or positive damage. And if you, if there's something that's not magical, if your weapons aren't magical for some reason, um, then it takes double that resistance. So it'll be resistant ten. Oh dang. Okay. So uh, Timothy does let them know, being like, "Hey, if you can do anything like." positive like life force kind of magic if any of you have that for whatever reason do that uh force damage definitely works on this thing and as he realizes force damage works on this thing he is gonna fling some magic oh, at the I will, dog oh, i will sorry. i will give you this one hint oh yes you do get the feeling that um even though these things are being manipulated by whatever's causing all these issues yeah that you do think that you might be able to, like, sway them back, talk them back? Yeah, I... Only problem is that Zava is fucking crazy. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. I... <laughs> Timothy has that, like, reflex of being, like, maybe to grab, like, or maybe to use fling magic, but then he actually takes a beat to be like, wait a minute. He wants to... Oh, I don't want to demoralize, but I think I want to... Mm, I think I want to de I want to demoralize to the one in front of Zaba. Mm hmm Because that's the only one I really can see. The other one's kind of hidden out of my eyesight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just say, 
Bad dog. Okay, you wanted so okay. Yeah. Okay, that's so you're 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 just trying to intimidate it. Yeah, I'm trying to intimidate to be like, hey, no, stop, stop. Uh, because I want to see if maybe he'll listen and like sit. <laughs> okay, so that if you wanted to do that, that would be a nature check. Oh, okay then. Then I'll do that instead. Sorry. No, 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 that's fine. I'm not. Great you can. At nature, we, but I'll well, try hold it. on. It would be nature or diplomacy. I would give you diplomacy. Better at diplomacy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, in the best case, he's not necessarily demoralizing. He is just like, mm -hmm. hey, hey. Uh, let me think. I'm trying to think of how I would say this rather. Timothy, I think actually, he because he obviously doesn't want to seem as a threat. He is like, no, 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 no. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're promised. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. <laughs> we're okay. good. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So yeah, he's gonna roll his diplomacy. Please. Big money. Six. Ooh, not quite. Not quite. Damn it. Damn it. All right. Uh, well then. Since diplomacy didn't work, he still has one more action. Then I guess yeah, I actually will now use demoralize. Okay. Now you, yeah, now you're just gonna try to scare it. Yeah. Now I'm, I don't want to scare the dog. Be like, hey. Uh, Rather, he is, he is using Zaba to scare him. Like, okay. he like points at Zaba is like, you see that thing? I can't protect you from that. Nice. You better run, buddy. Hey, that thing has feelings. I'm, I'm sorry, Zaba. <laughs> I cannot protect you from Zaba. Zaba is a big, scary man. And we. it will eat you in your sleep. So I'm attempting to do intimidation. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's that's a success. It's frightened. He's a good boy. He's like, I don't know about that. Points out Zaba. That I do know. <laughs> that thing scares me. All right. Well, Sil, you're up. Yeah. Have you communicated that we might be able to talk our way out yeah, of this? Yeah, or yeah, are you like, just being Timothy... really confusing with your... Yeah, no, Timothy's like trying to communicate with like you guys saying like, hey, no, seriously, I think we can talk these things down. All right. Uh, so we'll ignore the urge to go kill these things that just set them on fire and try to follow Timothy's first lead and say, yeah, just go home. Go back. Go home. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't suppose group impression matters in this. That's technically only for making an impression. Uh, no, this wouldn't be... This Let's wouldn't be... target the one that hasn't been damaged then. Okay. And tell it to go away. Go home. Mm -hmm. Give it a steak. <laughs> Give it a big juicy steak. Four. Oh, oh man. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Diplomacy. <laughs> so mad at my. All right, school. and I'm still slowed, so so we'll just oh, yeah. move up past Saba into the room, such that we aren't going to get breath. First <laughs> again. Breathe that's, on. Yeah. So in the room, Work. back Dog behind breath. the table. Gross. Oh, that's the worst. All right. So that's uh, that's your second round of slow. And now the scared puppers is. I'm sorry. Well, uh, it can't leave. I know. So it's going to pack tactics. And so. Uh, I do feel that it's important to point out I do have deny advantage. I don't know if that comes into play with this. Oh, but it absolutely does. I, you can't. I, be flat I can't footed. be flanked. Yeah, and I think that should uh, that should have it automated. So cool. Well, we'll double check to see. So first action move. Second action is going to attempt to bite, and that's a seven on the die, and that's a meets beats. Oh, because your AC went down because of the rage. Yes, it did. Ah, I was like, that shouldn't have hit, but it's the rage. Okay. 16 damage. Cool. And um, last one. Oh, another hit. Oh, one on the die is a crit miss. Look. It's good. This is good. Yeah, I was going to say, look how Zaba looking. All right. Hey, he's looked better. 
Don't <laughs> worry, I've, I've got heals on deck for you. I just gotta get to the turn. <laughs> and um, the one below you. Um, first strike. It's a 15 on the die, which is a hit. Four. Cool. Not a crit hit, at least. Oh, well. That's enough, though. But you fall unconscious. You do not. You do not actually go to dying. You fall unconscious nope. because that fire damage is non lethal. Huh. So you just go unconscious. Because remember, these things are benevolent. They can't. They're not meant to kill. You go EP mode. <laughs> yep, pretty Eepy. much. And um, it can't leave, and there's only um, Sill in this place, and it is a good, it is the best guard dog. Oh. It'll move up for its second action, and it'll attempt to bite Sill for its third. And Chomp, 19 on the die for 17 damage. Yikes. Okay. All right. And we go to Vesuviac. Okay. <laughs> so I am immediately going to uh, cast a two-action heal on Zappa to get him back up. Oh, nice. Beautiful. I target you. Healing. All right, so that's nine plus 16, 25 points are back up. I forgot how bonkers my heals are. <laughs> yeah. Here's and the unfortunate part. He fell prone and dropped both of his weapons. That's fine. That's, At least well, yeah, and dropped my rage. <laughs> and dropped your rage. Yeah. This is also the only way that he's going to oh, yeah, any absolutely. heal, regardless. Oh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> um, and then uh, Vesuviac's going to look to the dogs, take the cue from Timothy, and he's going to try and take the track. Uh, go, no, bad dog! <laughs> Which one? Sit down, right now! Which one? Uh, nature check. But which dog? Um, the one that took Vesuviac down. Or, so sorry, the one that took Zaba down. So the one next, that's right next to Sill, then. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ah, I'm messing up with that. <laughs> I believe in you. You got this. Come on. All right. Please. Let's get that. I don't want to kill Alexa. That is going to be a 12 on the die, plus 11 for a 23. That is a success. As you, as you say, uh, what'd you say again? I you, said, uh... No, bad dog, sit down. And it just looks right at you and like cocks its head. You know how dogs do? Yeah. Aww. And it is now stunned for one. It, like it is like not the condition stunned. Um, it becomes completely stunned, meaning that it's not doing anything for um, for one round. Okay. And. Okay. You and inherently Timothy knows that if another, how this would work is that if another successful check, doesn't doesn't matter who it's from, yeah. if another successful check is made against that, that hearth hound that has been stunned, um, then it will basically go dormant and return to its hearth. Uh, okay. So that is Vesuviac's turn. All right. I yelled at a dog. Uh. <laughs> you yelled at a dog. I don't feel good All right, about Zaba. it. <laughs> Zaba, you are up. Um, and you didn't actually go to dying, so you just went unconscious. And I, and yes. so I didn't move you in the in the initiative order. I believe is, that's how it works. I think you actually have to go dying to be moved in the initiative order. Works for me. So, unless somebody can can correct me. I, I'll trust no you idea. on this one. I don't know one. the rules well enough. No. If somebody wants to look Sounds it up good. in the meantime, um, and then we can correct ourselves. But we'll just go with it for now. Not nice. Saba will stand. 
for his first action. All right. Second action will be to pick up his sword. All right. Two-handed. Timothy, while Zava's picking up his stuff, like just like his little thing, he's like, don't kill them. Just uh, talk to them. Zava ignores Timothy. Oh. <laughs> and swings down on the dog directly north of him. Oh. And that's a hit. Four. 25 damage. As you take it out. Oh, bad dog. Um, all right. But uh, let me see here. And I got to roll that. Okay. All right. As you swing your sword through this ghost... And it just dis dis uh dis um disseminates evaporates through, yeah dis yeah it evaporates through it the disseminates air. works good yeah through the air as like the flames and the ash all kind of like pick up in a swirl of wind and gets gets swirled up right back into that hearth that was your so you stood picked up and swung okay. We did yeah, do it wrong. Yeah, that's the. Sorry. We did do it wrong? Yeah, it's when you're reduced to zero hit points. Oh, it is when thing. you're reduced. Yeah. Okay. Well, now we know for the future. Mm-hmm. Sorry, listeners. Well, I will move. Well, I guess we're not going to move Zava since we already took his turn. <laughs> but, Timothy, you're up. Can okay. you. You got three actions to succeed. Uh, yeah, I'm going to... Uh, well, yeah, because I can see the dog. Timothy looks to the dog. Oh, I wanted to flavor what he's trying to do for, like, diplomacy. I wanted to have him use one of his rations, actually. Okay. Uh, Can I move up so I can actually be in the room as one of my actions and then go over to try to do diplomacy for this dog? Sure, yeah. Okay. So give me a second here. Yeah, I should be here. Yes, I'm going Yes. Should we go? All right. I'm trying to be on the table, but, you know, it's as best as I can get. Uh, Let me see here. Sorry, give me so a second here. We're, we're saying that you're moving into the room and pulling out yeah. some jerky yeah. while, you're, while you're walking. Yeah, like he's pulling out some jerky, and I think he actually makes himself like crouch to his knees as well too. He's like, "Hey, no, 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 no! It's okay, it's okay, it's okay." Okay. We're trying to help out. We're trying to figure out what happened to your owner. All right. Go ahead so, and yeah. make that diplomacy check. Public role, yeah, or oh, I, yeah, absolutely. Whoop. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah. And it's that you jerky got- flavor. <laughs> and you got it. You, on that second success, you manage to get it. You calm down this hound, and you are able to. And the dog just looks right at you. It's our it had its it had its head cocked, you know, kind of just looking at Vesuviac, you know, and it settled down for a second. And then as you approach with the jerky, it looks at you, and it kind of opens its mouth and it's tongue lolls out oh. and it, and then it just kind of like get, gets down and and starts starts to lay down puts its head on its paws and goes to sleep and then just fades away back into the hearth Sabi so uses no escape no, <laughs> oh, <my> God, no. <laughs> as you manage to calm down this hearth hound and Timothy Again, your your knowledge of the you not your knowledge of this of these creatures, you know that again that these things will they they're helpful and yeah. you are able to get the you were able to get them to stand down. But again, there's something that is manipulating spirits there's something that's that's manipulating um so ghosts and ethereal creatures yeah um so so not just ghosts but like spirits and ethereal creatures because the killing intent wasn't undead yeah and the yamhibdis weren't undead 
there, but they were ethereal spirits, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Something has been... I just hit my microphone. Sorry about that. <laughs> something is manipulating these. Because these hearth hounds are inherently good creatures. Yeah. Um, and you know that this... That you, you were a able to ma to get this one dormant. And, but you don't you don't think that it's going to stay dormant. That you probably only have about a day to figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah. And Zaba destroyed that that one, but it's going to rejuvenate. And you don't know. It could be five, It could be two days. It could be a week. You have no idea. But it's going to rejuvenate. It's going to come back. Yeah. So. so. Timothy, I think, gets up from crouching on the ground, dusts himself off. I think he actually does put his piece of beef jerky that he did offer up uh, nearby the hearth. Because that's just, that <laughs> seems honorable to him. He would do that. And he's like, okay, so Tops, the one that I handled, or the one that, you know, uh, I was able to sway back to the hearth. That thing's got a day, Tops probably, until it comes back. And yeah, we probably want to figure out what's going on here before then. The other one that Zaba took out... It turned into paste, and then it turned into dust. Yeah. Yeah, there's another nice, eloquent way to state that. We probably have, like, two two to, like, I don't know, maybe a week? I don't know. I, I That one's hard to read. Uh, nah. My way is better, is what you're saying. Uh... Not There's no guarantee that when it comes back, it will still be hostile. Yeah. Uh, we will not be here. Well, that's hopefully the goal. Uh, but yeah, it's weird. Like Timothy, like kind of like ponders for a little bit. It's like normally these spirits don't like to, you know, be as vicious as they have been. Something's up. Something's like really bad. Even gonna, more so than normal. I gotta be treating Sills wounds during this. Yeah. Timothy takes a moment uh, and is just thinking, can, as he enters into the room, can you do like a perception check? Or oh, yeah, you, absolutely. Oh. I want to perceive this room. I, I want to see that. what's up with it besides the, the ashes of dogs past. <laughs> yeah. Um, you don't even need to make a perception check. Um, oh, well, I'll, whoops. There's nothing in this room. I'll tell you that. Um, but and I will tell you that the obvious exits, um, mm -hmm. and you you succeeded on that perception check, so you know that there's no secret exits here either. Cool. The obvious exits and the only exits are the one you came through. Exactly opposite that door is another one that is obviously another exit because it's the exact opposite. It's the way it's laid out. You're positive that this also leads outside. Now, there is a set of stairs that goes up. Um, I mean, this is an inn, so it yeah. probably leads to guest rooms. There is a door behind the bar, probably goes to the kitchen. And there is a curtain that goes to the back, probably to like the storage rooms or mm -hmm. like the service rooms of some sorts, maybe. Yeah, okay. Nothing else weird that I'm picking up on about this room at all, by no, any chance, not, right? No, not about this no. room, no. Okay. Um, I mean, you get some magical embers from the hearth the hounds that, yeah. that represents the monster parts. The puppies. Yeah. Just like you got some globs of ink from the last creatures that represent the monster parts from the young hibdies. These ones are magical embers that represents the monster parts from these hearth hounds. They're so cute. Who is they, your... they are absolutely adorable. Um... And if I, if I, if don't if I forget to share, listeners, remind me, and I will share the They're pictures of the hearth hounds. I healed you again, by the way, so. Okay, I was gonna ask if that was me or. Um, oh right, Zaba doesn't like healing. Yeah, Zaba doesn't, well, it doesn't like, like to healing. be touched. Healing. <laughs> He's like, oh, um, no germs. <laughs> how far are you? Yeah. You drive me to do it, but I will. Uh, cast a heal on you. Dang. One of the two action heals. I need to target Robert when I do this. Alright, you get 25 back. Hey, uh, 
Oh, that's thank you. You're a you're a good guy. I had doubts about you at first, but you know, you're how you're growing on me. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No, that was it. So where are you headed? Um, Suviak, maybe. I mean, I appreciate the healing. Maybe you could stay here for a minute. I'll go peek through one of these doors. Yeah. You want my help? Are you quieter than Vesuviac? I'm sorry. I'm definitely quieter than a him. A lot quieter, though, because uh, that's a low bar. Timothy, like, Timothy's like, I don't know why, but I feel like I have a plus seven to stealth. <laughs> uh, okay. You're going to put it on a scale. Yeah. <laughs> Vesuviac just stealth. shamefully walks in against the oh, wall, just no. leans against it. Not, not acknowledging the conversation. <laughs> you know, that sounds pretty good, Timothy. Maybe you go peek through one door, I'll go peek through this other door on my own. Got it. I'm sure you're really quiet, though. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate that. Uh- <laughs> you know what's funny? Zaba's actually stealthier than Timothy. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, Zaba's gonna lean over to Vesuviac and say, I bet I am quieter than little Timothy and I am big. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who's Vesu- headed where? Sil's uh, going to head for this west. Okay. Timothy's going to head for this area. The here. curtains? Okay. Yeah, the curtains. The coitins? The coitins. All right, so both of you make me some uh, secret uh, stealth checks. Okay. Bup, bup, bup. Here we go. The Suviac's just leaning against the wall, very Vegeta style, I'll say. <laughs> Angry goblin. All right, yeah. Um, yeah. You want to go ahead and open those doors, and for the curtains, you can just walk through and peek. Yeah, I. It's an ethereal wall. Just step right through it. Oh, okay. This was useful. My door oh. leads to outside. Yeah, Ooh. your door leads outside. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> but for Timothy, hey, you notice that this is a service corridor. Obviously, it's wide. And yeah. it and it heads about what? Um, let me get my ruler out. <laughs> Whoa! About forty feet for um to the north before it turns and heads uh, east. Mm-hmm. And you do notice that there are two doors to the west. Yeah. And make me a secret perception check, please. Okay. Perception check. Secret. All right. Yeah. And you don't quite hear anything. You're pretty... You're pretty sure there's nothing in you. There's nothing that you can hear. Okay. Oh. Like, is it just, like, the sounds of, like, the ocean I can still hear? Or is it, like... Or not the sounds of the ocean. Like, there's no real, like... (sighs) Nothing else I can hear. Like, if a needle were to drop, like, I would hear it kind of thing. Well, hold on one second here. Oh. Let's say that there is, um, you hear kind of the muffled, um, almost scared sounds, like crying, sounds of fear coming from the closet door that's, uh, that's further down. So there's, there's two doors to the west. Yeah. Um, the one that's further down. The second well, one. Okay, hold on. So, around here? Yeah, that door. That door, yep. okay. Mm. But, before you get to the door, as you make your way around, Ooh! you see this swirl, this mass uh um, clattering down the hallway, sloshing about. Um, it's a mass of uh, dusty dish rags and pots and uh, pans and other, yeah, other stuff that you would find in a bar in a pub. Mm-hmm. Let me show you. Like knives and forks and rags and plates and let's show that. Nah, fuck. We're haunted by Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it just looks Talk like about sp- a kitchen nightmare. Uh, yeah. Hey, 
Uh, yeah, it just looks like a bunch of spooky cutlery and stuff. It's got eyes on it, too. Yep. Like the rat looks faces. like a worm. <laughs> As this thing actually speaks out somehow without any kind of visible mouth, but speaks out in this, like, common tongue. Oh, there's another one of you. How about... Yeah, I'm gonna feast upon you, too. <laughs> And that's where we're going to end the episode, folks. Uh-oh. <laughs> you have a great one. Whoops. Until next time. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Hey, your party never ends. The Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure Path is copyright 2023. All logos, titles, and artwork are property of Skyscraper Studios and Roll for Combat and are used with permission. Pathfinder is a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. The theme music is written and performed by Robbie Whiplash.